Hello, my name is Oscar Ramirez. I'm the CEO at the Startup Commons. One of the challenges on the development financial side is about how to find the right balance between reporting on KPIs versus focusing on impact. I mean, how to, how to move from short-term objective to long-term impact. So in this presentation, I would like to share uh, the main reasons why it's so hard to align short-term and long-term from donor's perspective to effectively support ecosystem development. And I would also like to, to share some strategies towards fixing that gap. So the first step towards moving from short to long-term is to really understand what an ecosystem is. There are some definitions out there, but in general, we can say that an ecosystem is formed by a pool of talent, information, and resources, all interacting at the same time to basically help entrepreneurs find what they need at each state of growth. So it is truly an invisible infrastructure full of interactions, connections, and so forth where uh, it is quite easy to get lost, but that also requires to get a holistic understanding of it because it's, it's impossible to develop something that cannot be understood. And the fact is that ecosystems are like this. From a geographically perspective, we can have ecosystems at city, regional or national level mainly led by government as the responsible bodies to develop the economy in a specific territory. And then we have a business vertical ecosystems like FinTech or food or health, mainly led by the big companies or corporates that are touching multiple ecosystems geographically that contains most of the people and organizations working in the other ecosystems and where you can still find the same information, but duplicate it. So therefore it's important to understand all these different performance levels and how they are related between them. And the reality uh, based on real work with more than 30 ecosystems around the world is that all ecosystems are not understanding these dynamics as most of the actors are driven by their own agenda and therefore are struggling with this fra ecosystem fragmentation and connectivity issues. Making ecosystem actors uh, work in silos and not really enabling a real collaboration. And therefore being quite hard from them to get the big picture towards accelerating the growth of the ecosystem as a whole. And really facing problems at ecosystem level like how to maintain a holistic picture of the constantly developing and evolving ecosystem, how to measure the services and results of different development projects and policy actions, or how to collect, maintain, and share this data openly for the benefit of everyone uh, in the ecosystem. So what happens from, from a donor's perspective, uh, which is also crucial uh, for ecosystem developers for their work in developing the ecosystem? So donors are also missing the big picture due to this ecosystem fragmentation that avoids getting accurate information and data about the economies and the ecosystem being developed, like insights or impact measures, and ultimately for measuring the return of investment of the funding provided. So then we would have something like this domino effect where a poor understanding of the ecosystem generates funding calls that don't fit the reality and therefore the impact is low or is not as big as expected. 
it is something similar to surveys where the quality of answers are dependent on the quality of the questions. And why is this such a challenge? So uh, from a startup commons perspective, we have identified five main challenges. So the first challenge is the lack of a common vision, objective, and a strategy. It can happen when the actors did not discuss the collaboration in detail, and there's no shared things being worked on, and therefore there is no real working together. The second challenge is that uh, no actors are looking at the ecosystem as a whole, trying to understand the different dynamics that make the ecosystem factory produce more volume of innovative companies. Then we also have information disconnectivity in terms of what is going on in regards to new companies and innovation in your key markets or who is who, what is relevant for your business, who are doing what and why, where and when are things happening, etc. Then we have uh, one of my favorite challenges. When we think of ecosystem concept by definition, it is not owned by anyone. It is not really considered being controlled by anyone. So therefore, when we look at the freedom and responsibility, they work hand in hand. So if there's no one responsibility uh, to own the ecosystem, then there's no one responsible to make it work. We can say that it must be a collective multi-stakeholder responsibility, but as we know, it doesn't work like that in practice. And therefore, there should be someone that could take this responsibility to look after the overall interest, becoming permanent and surviving the different political cycles. And last but not least, we have, we have a sustainability challenge. Operating and, and developing an ecosystem is a really hard task, full of complexities and uncertainties. And traditional approaches like planning a project and budget, then acquiring initial funding to start and operate, setting up the operations, run the operations on fixed budget to ongoing costs, and then trying to find revenues or funding to achieve financial sustainability along the way based on unvalidated assumptions at time of planning and budgeting, it really doesn't work. So say this, what can we do? So how do donor resources fit in this reality with a target to make impact in the long term? The first step would be to allocate resources to create and set up this ecosystem operator entity, an entity in the middle to essentially serve various ecosystem functions equi equally and be a neutral and sustainable organization with proper resourcing long-term and data-driven development perspective with a strong mandate from all ecosystem key actors to coordinate ecosystem functions and connections at different levels, coordinate the ecosystem information flow and keep an inventory of development objectives, their progress and outcomes. Then secondly, implementing an ecosystem framework to really bring a structure and understanding around the connections, relations, and impacts of various actions and policies, and also to communicate on what area a specific action is targeted to improve and to be able to understand the context and measure the impact of, of specific actions. 
this ecosystem framework should bring a specific terminology that needs to be properly identified, standardized, and documented, starting with simple definitions like what is a startup, for example, or what is the startup journey, what are the different phases, and therefore start getting more holistic understanding around how an ecosystem behaves. And ultimately, I start getting a sense about how things work in reality. Then, uh, from the perspective of measuring development, services, and activities impact, KPIs need to be identified and put in place. KPIs to measure startup progress, how startups are evolving through the different phases and the contributing factors that make them progress. Then we have KPIs related to ecosystem services, identifying and mapping the available ecosystem services and organizations, looking at how those services are being consumed, what is the service output, how they are performing their efficiencies. And then we have KPIs related to ecosystem measurement to really measure uh, the outcome of ecosystem development actions and identifying cross-cutting topics and dependencies between development actions, impact measure, data, KPIs, and terminology. So therefore, attaching KPIs to a framework, so correlations, dependencies, and connections can be understood and ultimately understand what lower level KPIs contribute to higher level KPIs and what KPIs also indicate outcomes in some peer KPIs. And finally, I would also allocate resources on digital transformation. Because to be able to understand the impact of ecosystem development actions, a lot of good aggregated data is needed to be collected from primary sources. And this hard work simply cannot can't be done manually. It is very important to implement digital infrastructure to help bring more effectiveness for ecosystem orchestration, orchestration towards data collection, data standardization, and making data flow for the benefit of everyone uh, within the ecosystem. But also built in a way that also makes possible this connectivity between ecosystem and having a digital architecture like this enabling the ability of diverse systems organizations and cities to work together to plug together ecosystem components and eventually enacing real collaborations and building connected ecosystems in short, we are proposing that the best way to align short-term objectives with long-term impact is to invest in infrastructure, establishing ecosystem operator function to local ecosystems with proper resourcing and sustainable business model for long-term and data-driven development to drive digital transformation and to serve and connect various ecosystem functions equally from a neutral perspective. And because most ecosystems are having common challenges to really make it under open source software and creative commons core principles for sharing knowledge, education, best practices, software and data to essentially reduce duplicated work and facilitate collaborative efforts towards business creation and ecosystem development and eventually accelerate global development. So 
this is what we are doing with OS for Growth Initiative, an open non-profit multi-stakeholder initiative uh, to help establish and develop open global standards for innovation and entrepreneurship ecosystem development. An initiative that is basically driven by these five principles, only things that can be understood can be developed, only things that can be measured can be improved, only by sharing things and making them visible, available, and known about can those become commons or same things will be repeatedly reinvented and duplicated over time. If there are no shared things being worked on, there is no real working together and limited resources are dispersed. And only things that are in shared use can be benchmarked, scaled, and develop together. So that is all. Thank you so much for your attention.